Hey there, so today we have another review and I picked up another Bell's beer. Uh, Bell's is apparently very available, uh, recently got bought out. <laughs> and uh, this is cherry stout, stout with uh, cherry juice. I honestly have avoided this beer. Um, I don't know why, just, you know, never seemed too interesting, but picked it up. It's a seasonal, uh, seems like they're putting out so many, so many beers and they're available to me, why not? Um, they only recently got bought out, so this is still Bell's Bell's. And um, yeah. Cherry Stout, wow, 7% uh, made with uh, Traverse City, Michigan cherries, yeah. Fun stuff. And it, is it their regular? No, 7%, so it's bigger than their regular stout. So it's uh, like a, oh yeah, this is at the top end of, uh, <laughs> of stouts. There we go, studying for advanced this round. 5 to 7, uh, 5 to 7 ABV, 35 to, oh jeez. Uh, 35 to 50, jeez, oh 35 to 50, no. 35 to 45 IBUs, SRM is 30 to 40. Oof. I'm so bad about the vital stats, and I have to do a video for you guys about this stuff. Absolutely hate it, but. It's this guy, very dark, wow. This guy is dark as hell. Very, very dark stout. This is a solid 40 SRM guy, huh? I mean, the head on this guy looks like literally Bourbon County. I'm gonna pour it with the bottle. That is super dark, holy smokes. That pours, I mean, darker than some like Imperial Stouts out there. They're really pushing the dark muscle on this guy, huh? Hmm, interesting. Oh yeah. That honestly smells like Imperial Stout. I guess uh, not Imperial Stout, but like American Stout, but like, I mean, I, I would have full blind glass in crossed out just on the nose. Yeah, I mean, it's all that bitter chocolate rose. Like, it's all that bitter, bitter, dark, dark, dark. Um, this, like, is in the realm of, like, Norwal, Tempity, all that stuff. Like, it's got this, like, umami note, licorice. I did get no cherry at all. I'm blown away by the nose. I mean, this this smells 9, 10, 11%. This richness of, like, density. I mean, you smelled Imperial Stout before? This smells like Imperial Stout. That's crazy. That's insane. This guy only says a seven. So you get a little bit of like, just hint of like really nice tartness of cherry that really plays well. But full impression, this is a wonky beer because it smells and tastes like a beer salad. Question mark. Wow. So, like the nose, it's just so roasty. I mean, I would never have guessed. You get a white label, a tree, uh, like pretty cherries, they call it a snap, blah, blah, blah. You get a really nice kind of like a, you know, pinkish red kind of like, it's so pretty, it's so nice. And then it's a bruiser of a beer. Rich, dark, bitter. So as it, you know, sort of warms up on the palate for me. Um, okay, it's not Imperial Stout. But, I mean, we're talking about Imperial Stout, which sits at 8 to 12 uh, ABV. It's right there. I mean, I would guess this beer was 7.5, 8. Mm -hmm. Well, I think part of the thing is that it's rich like Imperial Stout up front. So it's dark, roasty, bitter. Coconut, um, burnt toasts, like really those really wonderful elements, a really intense uh, imperial stout. I guess American stout can do that too, but it's like it, it pushes it to the sense that like it's almost there. And then what pulls it back is there's this really nice like acidity of cherries. The cherries are not sweet here which again, plays weird into the label. Um, it's a really nice kind of like, um, like cranberry sauce kind of flavor. It, it's uh, this kind of like, instead of the um, sweet black cherries, it's like a bing cherry, this kind of really nice tartness. Mm -hmm. Acidity, um, sorry, roast, bitterness. And then you get a really nice kind of like, just like hint of like fruity, but like not even like dark red fruit, but like bright red fruit kind of flavor. 
and then it cuts into that kind of uh, sweetness of the beer. And then on the back end, it's still roast bitterness. And it's not that hoppy, which is, again, sings different from American stouts. Some, some American stouts are really are very citrusy and like have like heavy amount of hopping. This to me a lot, uh, is the malts and the roasted character showing with the, I guess, cherry as their dry hopping note, like offering this kind of nice acidity to clean up the beer. Uh, but it's still like got a good amount of res res residual sweetness. Hmm. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. This is actually a really tasty beer. Um, so strange. I mean, again, <laughs> if I brought a six pack of cherry stout to people, they would think it would taste like maraschino cherries, like like the the cocktail American fake yellow one or a uh, fake bright red ones. Um, they think it'd be sweet and you know it's got a pretty label. It's got this red color, like. It does nothing in that sense. This is very much an almost imperial stout with a little bit of tart cherry flavor on it. That's so crazy. I mean, I enjoy the beer, but like, man, packaging is... Why, why, why did I not pick this up? Because I thought it'd be like a jokey kind of fruit beer, but... One of those wonky beers that Bell's produces in my mind. As I drink it more, it gets more harmonious and um, tastes more like American Stout, but it is so roasty though. This is not for people that want cherry. It has nothing to do with cherries, honestly. You don't smell the cherries at all. And on the palate, it's like very nuanced. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, the cherry plays into this dark fruit character that you can get in a lot of dark beers, but there's no like cherry cherryness to it. Yeah. Wow. So you guys have had, had to have tasted this guy before. I mean, it makes no sense to me. Call this guy cherry stout. Like this is really like, I would call it, if I had to label this guy, I would say it's their winter stout with a hint of cherry, right? Winter stout, little cherry, and then I would have black labeling on this guy, not highlight the cherries at all, have snow on it, have like maybe a little cherry hanging off a tree. And like, we just put a little cherry in there, just like make it a little bit fruitier for the, you know, I don't know, but you guys see it, this guy's pitch black. It's a solid dark, 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 dark beer for cherry stout. Okay, um, rating. Complaints enough about what the labeling does. Tasty, that's fine. Pretty good. Honestly, I really like the mold complexity. It, it's got this rich umami note that like sells you on Imperial style. Um, it has a nice levity to it. The tartness of the cherries, um, you know, pulls back on the amount of like rich malt up front. Uh, the cherry flavors play well with that kind of dark fruit character. They get some uh, from some of these uh, stout beers. Rich, it's rich, it's rich. Seven percent, it sells it. You know, seven percent. You're doing a really nice "quote unquote" session ability compared to uh, Expedition, sitting at like ten, eleven percent. Or sorry, I think nine. Um, very tasty. Full amount of flavor. You get char. You get caramel flavors. You get burnt toast. You get um, uh, maybe a little, nah, not quite butterscotch, but um, burnt flavors and like just like rich, rich, rich beer. Complex. Wow. Ninety. Um, cherry style from Bells. So this is one where I give what the glass says, not what the label says, right? So we go back and forth. Last Bell beer, uh, Bell's beer I did, the uh, Flamingo, the pomegranate one, very boring. And the label didn't do anything for me, as in what they advertised. So you give a pad rating on that guy. This one, this all cherry style, but I don't need to be cherry style. The, the liquid in glass is actually tasty. So you give it 90, so. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, you know, the beer is good. So the label sort of detracts, but the beer is good. So 90, until next time guys, cheers, let me think. Uh, this beer is weird, later.